Okay, let's see here. You are sharing your screen. View. Don't want to speaker view. Chat rooms, camera, more. Really? I'm just trying to breathe. Did you mess up? Did you mess up? Okay. Yeah, really on. She's our science teacher too, so she'd literally on during it. And I'd Okay, I'm kind of have to stay over here because there's people. Yeah. But we're going to get started. So, for the people in Billings and Fargo, my name's Julia. This is I'm Chelsea. I'm Lonnie. I'm Caitlin. And we all went to Peru this last um, summer. It was a great experience. So, we're just going to give you a small presentation and answer any questions you guys might have. So this is our presentation, okay. <laughs> okay, so when you first get there, um, you land in Lima and you kind of, we got there kind of late the very first day, but the next day we went on a city tour. Um, and yeah, hopefully they can still see us. I think so. Okay, so you go on a city tour um, and you're, you get a guide and they give you just a, brief overview of kind of the history of Peru and then Lima as its capital. And these are some pictures. This is, um, what is Pollo it called? Pollo Saltado. Pollo Saltado, which is basically, it's um, really yummy. It's rice <laughs> and then it's like a stew kind of. Yeah, it's kind of like thing. a stir fry, but with French fries, yeah. which sounds weird, but it's like really freaking good. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is more of our city tour. You guys want to see anything? Uh, we went to a lot of churches, so if you're into that, we went. even if you're not into that, it's still like really neat architecture and everything. Um, we went to this park that had a whole like walkway of people who have um, painted paintings and had them for sale. The prices are like really amazing. Um, yeah. Yes, and then their national drink is a Pisco Sour. So that's what the bottom photo is right there. Those mm -hmm. are super yummy. Mm -hmm. Pisco is like, is that their national, national drink? Yeah. Yeah, so there's like Pisco Sours or Pisco Punches, but the sours are really good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like there's like whipped egg whites on top. But yeah. Delicious. Okay. The next day after the city tour, you go. we went to Paracas Island and the sand dunes in Inca. So Paracas is um, on the coast and you get like a boat tour around some of the islands where there's a bunch of wildlife and we saw dolphins and penguins and lots of birds. Seals. Seals, that was fun. Oh, there's more photos. Here's yeah. us on the boat tour and some rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go sand duning in, or we went sand duning in Inca, which I'm assuming they'll have you guys do as well. Um, where you're on the go-kart going yeah. fast it's very fast faster yeah. than you would think yeah that was my favorite part because yeah. you go over like steep cliffs and he's literally gunning it and you're yeah. like literally fly oh yeah, yeah. one if of our girls in, yeah. yeah one of our girls her seatbelt kept coming undone she's like i'm gonna die yeah, <laughs> I was yeah the, it was fun though yeah i was in the very front without a handle and the, oh, sitting next to dr anderson so i was like <laughs> trying to be as small as possible <laughs> Uh, okay, so there's some more. The, that's a really fun day. So then after you have kind of that fun first weekend, you get to start working at uh, La, La Alegria and El Senor, which means... Dr. Wasa? <laughs> something, it's like the faith, our faith in the Lord or something yes. like that. Is oh, that right? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Alegria means happy, but yeah. it could be... Yeah. yeah, I think it's that. But um, <laughs> so what we mostly did and what the years in the past have told us that they do as well is you do a lot of um, wheelchair 
modification. So a lot of the kids at the school, it's specifically like designed for children with disabilities. And a lot of this, the kids at the school are in wheelchairs or have walkers or something of that sort. So when we got down there, they had just gotten this giant donation of a bunch of new wheelchairs that they wanted us to use. Um, and essentially you take these or the chair that the child is already in and use whatever materials you brought or that are at the school and make the chair fit the child. Um, since they're growing so much, a lot of the modifications that the year before us made or that we made this year won't fit them the next year. So you'll probably see some of the stuff we did if you do go down there and you're just adjusting to make sure that the chair fits them. Um, when we first went down there, we didn't have a lot of wheelchair knowledge, I'd say, but being thrown into it, you get really used to it and understanding what they're supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. um, and you in learn the chair. really quickly as well. Yeah. Uh, the name means joy in oh, our Lord. Joy in the Lord. Happy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Here's some more photos. It's a lot of hands on, lots of down on the ground, getting to know the kid um, and getting to know what they need very quickly. And also, in our groups, we were given like an interpreter for each mm -hmm. like three people. So that's how we talk to the students because a lot of them only spoke Spanish. Yes. And at first the language barrier was a little bit challenging because it's like I'm talking to the interpreter, but you're supposed to be talking to the child, um, even if they can't understand you. So they might still be looking at the interpreter, but you still want to talk to the child. Yeah, so lots of using pads and duct tape and zip ties, kind of just everything that you can for what you have um, to make it fit the child the best that you can. So we also this year decided to do something um, a little bit different. We had noticed in years past that some of the transferring um, techniques that the staff was using was not quite up to what we would use here in the US. So Dr. Anderson decided that he wanted to do a presentation to all of the staff members to kind of combat that a little bit more. Um, and so we completed several presentations to staff members regarding proper transferring techniques for the children in and out of the wheelchair. And we also did a uh, transfer training with a uh, sliding board specifically for one child, because two. two children, because um, they really needed a sliding board transfer rather than just two pe even two people lifting them up. Yes. We also in the presentations talked about like just um, general like wheelchair management that the staff could do as well like, throughout the year we're not there because they don't when we went they don't have an they didn't have an OT as part of their staff they had a PT um, but there was no OTs at that time so we were kind of thrown into that. So I'm assuming this is something they'll want to keep doing just to kind of reinforce it, but maybe it wouldn't be on transfer techniques um, in the coming years, I guess. Okay, so after, or this is, this is just like, oh, this time. is where you're, you have some free time. Um, all the meals while you're working are provided by the sisters that you stay with. Um, so this is some of our food, a lot of chicken, so lots of salads. And then this image is where we, uh, the like the courtyard. courtyard of where we stayed and a bakery that we went to. And in the food, usually most of the time it's like rice and potatoes mm -hmm. with yeah. a, some protein Lots of and vegetables. Yeah. Yes. It's really good though. Yeah. But. Freaking delicious. Okay. And then on the Thursday night that we worked, so. so you work Monday through Friday. And on that Thursday night, we got to go to a traditional dance and dinner so this is um the people dancing and then we got to go up on stage and dance in a competition and we won just so you know <laughs> big shoes to fill yes we did get to do the ymca nobody else knew the ymca besides me so that was <laughs> fun <laughs> um and then on the friday we got to complete a home visit yeah, so um, we basically went to this child's home, and it was a child from the school, 
and um, we kind of looked at how their home was laid out, where the child usually is at. Um, and then we also made a home program because the, the family was incredibly involved uh, with this child. The brother was um, super caring. Like you could tell they were all very, very close. Um, <clears throat> and so we kind of made like a home program for her and we like showed her what she could do for like passive range of motion, active range of motion, those kinds of things so that they could um, yeah, keep her a little bit mobile and yeah. Um, we also did some adjustments on, uh, you can see her standing, no, you're good. Her standing chair here, um, it was starting to not fit her. And so they were saying like, oh, we might have to get rid of this, but it was actually adjustable. So we just um, adjusted it to her height. Um, and it was really interesting because this uh, child has cerebral palsy and she can't use her hands to write or anything. So she would actually use her mouth um, to turn pages of like her books, um, use her iPad with her mouth. You can see she is holding uh, the iPad pen in her mouth. And so they also wanted to know what else we could do um, like to modify so that she could still turn pages because it's really hard to turn a page of a book with your mouth. Um, so we suggested um, getting like, um, what are they called, like book tab thingies yeah. so that she could easier, more easily turn the pages. Um, and then at the very end, the even though we were going to go back to eat at the um, nunnery, that's not what it's called, but that's what I call it. <laughs> um, monastery, there we go. Um, <laughs> We, uh, the mother and the grandma, they absolutely insisted that we stay for dinner and or lunch rather, and so they served us lomo saltado, which is the beef version of pollo saltado, it was and it was so freaking delicious. And then we went to the dinner show and had another serving of lomo saltado, yeah. which was not as good as this was. No, <laughs> no, that was so yummy and authentic. Yeah. Oh. And then um, also, I think we, I forgot to talk about it when we were talking about working, but we also did feeding evaluations mm -hmm. and interventions during their lunch period, um, which is also very overwhelming at first, but again, you get thrown into it and get used to it. And um, with the feeding stuff that you guys have, are, are getting now, um, you would be able to handle yeah and it's like at first you don't think that you know what you're doing but then it's like oh wait yeah i actually kind of do know what i'm doing so yeah yeah okay. this is us saying goodbye to everyone all the sisters all the staff workers um everyone was super appreciative and we had like an end recap meeting which is super nice where we played a video of everything but yes yeah, so, yeah. By, and we had like a little ceremony where they all sang for us and oh, yeah. they gave us thank you cards or thank you gifts which is super sweet all these kids yeah. so there's kids back here and then all these kids at the front in these two rows are the kids that we helped this year and it's super cute because they i think they start off the week by like singing songs and like <laughs> praying like just all together in their courtyard it's super cute Oh, and Kimberly, she sang. Oh, Kimberly is the yeah. main person that works with you down there, and this is her. Yeah, so. and they like <laughs> sang a song too. Dr. Anderson and Emily, they sang with yeah. the kids, which is super cool. Yeah, yeah. And um, our, yeah, go ahead. What of our was this after we were all Friday done? night? I think it was. Um, Peru played. What? Who did they play? Um, it was soccer, Chile. but it's called Chile. football. Oh, Chile. Yeah. yeah, they played. Which is their rival. Chile. Yeah, so it was like and won. super intense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they yeah. won. And we got to go see like a huge celebration with that. And there's like a huge crowd, people like drinking beer, selling beer. We had some. <laughs> and like just giant screens all around. It was super fun. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, when they say football, they mean soccer. Yes. Yeah. Soccer. Okay. <laughs> they're very passionate about it yeah so another thing they added this year that they're planning on keeping in is we were able to go to the university um that has ot down in peru it's the only inter university that has ot there and we presented to their students and then their students also presented to us um and so the way that worked is 
um, Kemmerly talked to the professors, um, both Dr. Anderson and the professors in Peru, and decided what topics they wanted to hear about. So um, the Peruvian students spoke to us about how they make splints and other kind of therapy items um, using not so common um, materials. And then we presented on sensory input and home, mod home modifications, yes. And, and there's a kitty there too, that was disturbing. Our presentation was just funny. And to be friend to Dr. Anderson, then yeah. ended up biting him, which is, <laughs> which is funny, <laughs> but sad. Yes. Um, um, and then they did some, we did some more dancing. They love to dance, so that was fun. They yeah. again made us do the YMCA. Mm -hmm. I again was the only one that knew it, yep. so. Um, and that's their stuff they made that they showed us during their yeah. presentations. So this is a, a foot orthoses, and then this was for posture and like upright sitting for a baby or a child. And then they gave us some gifts and we gave them a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. They were like super grateful for it because we had like a lot of AFOs and yes. they don't have like all the materials and stuff that we do here. So it was super nice that we were able to bring them yeah. stuff. They were super excited. So then on the same day that we went and presented at the university, we also had a very short um, visit to an orphanage um, where these kids are more disabled than what you would see at the school. Um, they, this child here has Down syndrome and is just very like hypotonic and very wiggly. So he would, kind of wiggle his arms I'm sorry. and hit himself in the head a lot. And so what they had going on was they just had his arms strapped to his body. Um, but Dr. Anderson kind of made some, and Caitlin made some adjustments to his chair, I think, to make, him, make it so that he wasn't so tied up, right? Yeah. And some sensory <laughs> input stuff. And then this photo, I did you remember? Oh. Oh, that was Rachel's. Oh, name. this was Rachel's but child. What? The chair you brought? Oh, yeah. So last year, I got in contact with some alumni, and we were able to bring down how many wheelchairs? Uh, oh, no. One, one big wheelchair slash activity, char uh, activity thing. Oh, we don't have a picture. No, it was pink it. and very cute. And then like five walkers, um, which all went to children that really needed it. And it was really great to see. That is a little bit of a headache getting it down there at first, but it's really worth it if you guys can bring bigger stuff like that because they really do need it. Um, and it is considered a personal item if you take, well, yeah. at least the walkers were, if you take them on the plane. So yes. we didn't have to pay extra for them. So you, we had a really limited amount of time at the orphanage. I think it was something like three hours and we saw um, five or six kids. Um, obviously we wish we could have stayed longer and seen more, but that just wasn't kind of the way that our timing worked out this year. Um, but they, this experience was probably one of the best I think I had down there. The kids are amazing. They're very sweet and, um, Generally, they are more disabled, like their families couldn't take care of them, couldn't handle it. But the staff at the orphanage is very caring and they want these kids to have the best that they can. So it was a great experience. Okay, so then after you finished all of the work in um, Lima, you go to Cusco. And this is more of kind of like cultural learning, that kind of thing, more free time. Last year they did go to a school. In oh, Cusco, yes. Right? Last year they did. We did not get that opportunity. Yeah. But um, you, at this point, this is where we were learning a lot about the culture. So this is a market that we went to in Cusco. Lots of potatoes. They have something like 
30,000 varieties of potatoes or something like that. Um, and then we were able to be there for the Inti Raymai festival, which is their festival to the sun god. It's the winter solstice. Yes. Yes. And it was, they have like actors and a big parade and lots of music and dancing. It was a lot of fun. Um, and then, <laughs> gosh, <laughs> we, we went further um, up to, what was it called? Not Cusco. Uh, further up um, to it was like in another town. Cusco uh, and Machu Picchu. Yeah, another town called Machu near Machu Picchu. Yeah. Um, and we went to a guinea pig farm. Isn't that so fun? And we did a hike. That was we fun. We Nobody in. was prepared for this yeah. hike, and they were like, we're hiking. Yeah, we're so, like, yeah. I was literally wearing like a skirt. Yeah. 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 Also, I'm terrified so, of heights, like, and, and there was like, I was not prepared. I was not prepared for the heights. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then we took a train up to Machu Picchu itself um, to stay the night before we were going to go up there. And then we went. And it was such a beautiful day, and we went pretty early, I think, and there was like almost nobody there. It was amazing. We went at the perfect time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got to see the, not llamas, are they llamas? Yeah, we got to see llamas. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know. Llamas. More pictures. Again, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Everything you wish it was, it is. And then (laughs) when you're there, you go, you get some time to go shopping and they tell you to go to this one shop that gives amazing discounts. So definitely go there, but then they also make you take this picture. So, Mm -hmm. you know. And she always takes my butt. Okay, and then this is the foreshadowing, I guess. Um, Yeah, so one of their mate or one of their delicacy dishes is guinea pig, obviously. Um, it's actually not that bad, <laughs> just so you know. Um, the hardest part is to get over seeing that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's good, a lot of fun. It tastes good, and obviously you don't have to eat it if you don't want to. Yeah. It's not. And nobody's gonna force you. There are also like this is not the only way that they eat. Yeah. Like you can get it served not seeing its face. Um, <laughs> one of our guides told us that if your family doesn't give you guinea pig on your birthday, they don't love you. So oh, wow. take that as you will. Yeah. <laughs> and then that was our last day, um, and we ended up flying back to Lima. Uh, the flight into um, Cusco is a little bit intimidating because you're kind of turning as you're landing, but. Everything goes well. They know what they're doing. So you're like at sea level too. in Lima, and then oh, yes. you're up to what ten thousand feet. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's, it's, it's a lot of elevation. Just get over the mountains and boom, you got yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> which, which, to land. Yeah. Which interesting yes. fact: Machu Picchu is actually lower elevation than Cusco, the town of Cusco, which is really yes. interesting. So with the elevation, they will give you coca tea or coca leaves to chew on. And those are miracle workers, really. You don't, it really helps with altitude sickness and that kind of thing. It is where cocaine originates, but that's okay. (laughs) Yeah, so you guys have any questions for us? Uh, Yeah. What's one thing you didn't do that you wish you so just repeat the question. So oh, what's here. he asked? What's one thing we didn't do that we wish we would have done? Where is the teams? Can I would I get say it back up. Oh, here it is. I would say I wish we had more time at the orphanage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we kind of left. It was literally like a countdown at the end, like five, four, three, two, one. We're like, ah. yeah, yeah, done. And then it felt yeah. like a game show. Yeah, it was like the baking shows. We're like, yeah, yeah. don't touch. <laughs> so. But, yeah. I think that would probably be an all around from anyone you ask, they probably would mm-hmm. say more time to, at the orphanage, which wasn't, it wasn't really a function of how, what we did. It was more how they scheduled things. And from what I understand, they had been talking about giving a little bit more time for that. So, um, I guess we didn't talk anything about packing. You guys yeah. probably yeah. are wondering that. Um, yeah, so you need really, really comfortable shoes. You're on your feet a lot, and you're walking from 
the monastery to the school every day mm -hmm. and it's a pretty decent hill especially going back up um, and if you're tired and your feet hurt already then you're kind of going to be drained after that but so you do need good shoes and then for scrubs I brought four pairs and just used my scrubs from like the first day on the last day and I didn't have a problem with it yeah I only brought three pairs and it was fine you can mix and match yeah. <laughs> Chelsea you went overboard <laughs> um, when you're down there it is like here it's very hot and summery right because you're going in June but down there it's their winter so you do have to be a little bit more prepared for some colder weather nothing like here like you don't need a puffer jacket or anything like that but um athletic fleeces let me see if i can we have a list we could send you guys to and of like supplies and stuff we made a uh we went over in inventory of stuff you guys would need yeah so we'll send that to you guys yeah um, and as for shoes if you're like a really light packer like i am i only brought a pair of uh tennis shoes and my sandal chacos and i wore the like i hiked machu picchu with my chacos yeah just with socks on and it was just fine my feet did not hurt at all mm -hmm. while i yeah. was there so yeah kind of just you want to make sure that you have layers um like under scrub shirts are really good or like that I had a fleece quarter zip that I wore like almost every day because it was nice to just be able to take it off if I got hot. This was um, the fleece that I wore while I was there. It was really nice. For like day to day stuff um, when you're not working, it's really like you can either dress up or you don't have to. When you go to the um, sand dunes, it's very hot. Um, so you probably on that day want to layer quite a bit because it's really hot at the sand dunes, but you're at the ocean in the morning and that's rather chilly. Also bring a like a plastic bag because my outfit from sand duning was completely covered in sand and it got all over my suitcase. So like bring something separate to put yeah. that pair of clothes in. Also, yeah. one more thing. Um, so some of the bathrooms they have you pay to oh, go. Yes. It's not a lot, but I would recommend bringing like wet wipes with because it's way yeah. easier and nicer than carrying around toilet paper. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just think it's better. Yeah. It and fun. you don't have to pay too. So. Did you have a question? Did you guys have like a backpack or like something yes. to bring with you like every day? So um, I think what we ended up doing was everybody had a checked bag and then probably a carry on and we all had our backpacks. Mm -hmm. so like but. Yes. Yeah, and like yeah. day to day, like when we're going out and about, I just had like a crossbody bag. Yeah. And know Julia brought her Lululemon bag. Yeah, I brought, if like, for like, if you're sightseeing, you don't want to have that giant backpack, which is understandable, but a crossbody bag is really good, mm -hmm. especially because like you are in another country and you do need to be aware of your items at all mm -hmm. times. So things where you can keep it in front of you or have it kind of locked on you is good. While we were at Inti Ramey, we were watching the oh, parade. Yeah. And somebody got their phone swiped. Not our group, no. but somebody. Yeah. Somebody behind us was holding their phone out like this and not paying attention, and they. Yeah, shit. Yeah, so you have to be really careful about that stuff. Like yeah. not leaving your phone in your pockets. Yeah. Yes. There was one girl in our group. I was surprised she didn't get her yeah. phone yeah. Rachel, stolen. <laughs> Rachel was constantly leaving her phone out. We were like, we had mass, and then she, she left her phone on the pew, she and literally, watched. like so many of the people there, they're looking at her like. You're gonna get your stuff. Yeah, so I grabbed it. I'm like, yeah. Oh gosh. Oh, she asked it. Um, what the UV was like for somebody that burns easily, and you should bring sunscreen. Sorry. I also burn really easily and I brought like uh, 50 SPF uh, mineral sunscreen and that worked really well. And also that's like at Machu Picchu since it's higher elevation mm -hmm. it is like a lot higher UV index so you should wear sunscreen there and bug spray because yeah, oh, yeah. some people got eaten up and I doused myself in bug spray and I got like maybe three bites. Yeah. But. I didn't get bark ones but um, it like we can wear hats like Yeah. 
So um, nobody wore hats when we were working. We wore hats kind of day to day. She asked if you can wear hats. Um, but <laughs> um, yeah, I guess, is there, do you guys have a regulation on hats while working? <laughs> I'd say likely they want you to look as professional as you can. So wearing hats while you're working with a child, maybe not. You're but also under like a tent when you're working with the children. So you don't really need to wear a hat. Yeah. Um, yeah, just while you're walking around is fine, though. Um, yeah. I know, like, some people were saying, like, you don't get as much experience as you go through as, like, you can do a public. Do you guys agree with that? She asked if you get less experience going to Peru. <laughs> I think you get a lot more hands-on experience and actual yes. clinical skill. I can't say that for everybody. From what I understand, it's more of a shadow experience. I think some of the field works here allow you to like do a little more hands-on stuff. But in Peru, you 100% are going to be doing hands-on stuff. Um, you get like the um, experience with uh, speaking to someone that doesn't speak the same language as you and um, kind of working with a different profession, the PT. Uh, or the PT there and um, yeah yeah um even like just the cultural aspect of things you if you when you stay here you're working with people like you right you're getting that experience of working with somebody's child which is great but they speak the same language as you they have the same beliefs as you so going to Peru in my opinion just expands that ability to develop rapport um, with somebody that's not like you, um, which I think is worth every cent. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody's really concerned about money when you're going there, um, yes, the trip there is really expensive, but their currency is um, not, how do I say that? Um, like it, the exchange rate is much lower. Yeah, it's like 36 cents or something like yeah. that to a US dollar. And their stuff is also priced a lot lower. Like we got a manicure a manicure for 15 US dollars and that was actually overpaying apparently. Yeah, we should have paid like $8. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay, we got yeah, scammed. We got I knew scammed. we were getting scammed. <laughs> we really fine. did. <laughs> yeah, right. It's fine. Um, yeah. yeah, and you have plenty of time to go out and explore and like learn on your own, which is great. Um, but yeah, should we talk about the clubs? Oh, sure. Um, so where we stayed in Lima, we were like surrounded by clubs. So we went out one night, and it was really fun. Yeah, <laughs> don't want to yeah. overdo it, but yeah, yeah. 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 We also had a flight. Downtown? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, once you get there, how much do you pay out? So most of your meals are like generally covered, especially when you're working. Your meals are always provided by the monastery, so you're basically paying nothing for that. The dinner show, the meal is included in what you're paying for going. So they give you like a ticket um, for a pisco sour and your lomo saltado, and that is what you get for dinner and you don't have to pay anything. Um, we did have a couple, I think there was like one or two lunches and maybe one or two dinners that we ended up doing on our own um, and then whatever like gifts or souvenirs you want to buy I think I brought um, probably five hundred dollars and I didn't even spend that so probably I'd say like maybe three to four um, if you want to have extra it's not gonna hurt you most places will accept visa um, I ha they don't really accept Discover, I found out, so don't rely on that. But um, you can also always go to an ATM if you needed to. So you just brought the cash and then you Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> the exchange rate at the airport is awful. Mm -hmm. So Kimberly will help you out and do some exchanging with her. But then there's also plenty of places in town that will exchange money for the correct rate. There was like a smoke shop that we went to and they exchanged. Like it wasn't even like yeah. a currency exchange rate. Yeah, <laughs> but we got a good rate. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take a point. yeah. 
Hmm. I've always just brought my visa card and then there's an ATM at the gas station and yeah. my visa card, um, my bank will reimburse any ATM fees. Mm -hmm. And so I think there was like a, I don't know if it was $14 international fee, uh, <clears throat> but my bank reimbursed that. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I just took out however much and mm -hmm. that's how I got cash. That way I didn't have like a big, you know, yeah. bunch of cash just in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Phones. Is there like Wi-Fi? Oh, she's hard? asking about phones. There is Wi-Fi where we stayed, but we didn't want to pay all. Caitlin had a plan where she could use international service, but if you don't like have that plan, I think you should get charged. If it's like Verizon, you get charged yeah. like $10 a day. So Lots of places, lot. like even just restaurants have Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. All you had to do was ask for the password and they'd give it to you. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think we ever ran into anything where someone was like, no, we're not giving you our Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, People are very open down there. And also they have you download um, WhatsApp. WhatsApp. It's just kind of better for international communication. So I had my parents download it and I could talk to them whenever I wanted to. Do you have like service a lot of the time? Um, if you pay for it. Okay, so, like so otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, otherwise the Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah, a lot of us just stayed on like airplane mode and then just used Wi-Fi mm -hmm. when we got it. But it wasn't like a big deal because we were busy most of the time anyway so we weren't and like on our phones yeah. much you're never really going off on your own um that i wouldn't recommend it at mm -hmm. least unless you do have that service um so it wasn't something we really had to worry about so um in the hotels you generally stay with one or two other people um but everyone got their own bed every time everyone just slept in a twin size bed that's just how their hotels are set up and then when you're working in lima everybody gets their own room with an attached bathroom um which is really nice oh i will say the shower situation at she the asked about room rooming i'm sorry is, um at least in my room it was not amazing so like be prepared for a cold shower oh. yes they don't have like an unlimited they don't have an unlimited water heater, mm -hmm. so, so fast yeah, showers. The hotels were though, like they yeah. were, they were nice. And also with toilet paper, you don't flush it. You have to oh, throw it yes. away. So we had like a community garbage that was like outside. So we just take our little garbages and dump yeah. it. Do the walk of shame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if anyone is also concerned about like food or like if you'd be able to handle it. A lot of like the sisters are very aware that we're American and that we don't under like we don't eat the same things as them. So a lot of the stuff is like chicken that's breaded or um, like the lomo saltado, right. which is just beef and vegetables and rice. Um, it's, they're very aware that you're American and they're not gonna put like a guinea pig in front of you on the first day. Yeah. Um, so they're, very nice about that and if and you don't like seafood like I can't stand seafood um I was really worried about that on this trip I didn't see seafood once yeah. except at the monastery when they served yeah. uh ceviche which I just didn't. yeah we're gonna like bring snacks yes yeah for like the days that you're working especially you don't need a lot really because you do get meals provided I Chelsea yeah, and I we brought way too many snacks yeah, we ended up leaving it yeah and donating yeah. But Emily like supplies you with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yes, she yes. does. There's yeah. a gas station there with chips and mm -hmm. sandwiches and oh, empanadas. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that are mm -hmm. really reasonable. Uh, I guess one other thing we did forget to mention was um, you also, after doing the sand dunes, you go to like a nice restaurant and eat, and then they also do a pisco tasting there. Um, so you get some more experience with that and you can buy full bottles from there which are like six dollars a bottle for like super nice wine so. So. but did yours explode or did rachel's rachel's like yeah. the cork started coming oh, out no. on the way back so, so just be careful and maybe bring a plastic bag you know yeah yeah any other questions
No? Is there coffee? Yes, the coffee yes. down there is amazing. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can order a normal latte wherever you go. And then also the sisters had coffee with like milk and sugar and stuff like that mm -hmm. every day. Uh, I didn't yes. see it. Oh, yes, I didn't buy it. <laughs> so. yeah, I don't think anyone's got any. We all mostly <laughs> drank coffee, I think. But yeah. yeah. Leche. Yes, it's amazing. Carry a water bottle you yes, mm -hmm. especially when you get up into Cusco, you're at a high elevation that likely you're not used to, so you want to be as hydrated as possible. Mm -hmm. So bringing a big water bottle is great. They, have, like, like, they will give you water yeah. bottles the whole time. Yes. Water comes in a big box, and they'll set it at the end of your hallway where you all are staying in rooms, and then you just fill up your water bottles yes. as you need. And that's kind of how it was at all the hotels as well. Yes. So don't drink the tap water. No. You can use it to like brush your teeth, but yeah. don't yeah. be like glugging it. Down. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I didn't get sick. So. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> did anybody get sick? Um, we got head colds. So yeah, bad, but that was, but, yeah. We didn't get like we. Yeah, the other group that goes to Peru that like goes up into the mountains. We went or we left like right after them, and everybody was like, "They're so sick. It's terrible." And we were all like, "Oh my gosh, we're gonna die." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but no, nobody so, got. You got like that. Oh, you got. Yeah, I got. Um, I got elevation. Elevation. Sick the first day we got to Cusco, I. Had, Elevation sickness pretty bad. I couldn't even like stand. I was like swaying. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like tripped over the stairs. I couldn't even walk. But um, I went to, they had like a pharmacy there, or whatever. They have like really good drugs that help with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> also, like the Coca tea is yeah. really great. It's, yeah. We're, we were like constantly drinking Coca tea and they have like, Coca tea cough drops or yeah, was yeah, it candy? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, Julie and all Joe, uh, Julie and I also chew it on the leaves and it like makes your mouth numb, which yeah, we didn't does. know. So just a You're heads like, up. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I would say it's a, an amazing experience. It's definitely worth every cent that you put into yeah. it. I know that the bill is daunting, um, but I think that money comes back, and this is a one time experience yeah like yeah sure you could go to Peru by yourself but you're not gonna get the same it's also cheaper to go like with the group and you're not gonna get the same like experiences with a group with the safety and like all the different places that we went to you just won't be able to get that on your own and also I feel like the trip brought like a lot of our classmates closer together because oh, sure. yeah. we yeah just got super close mm -hmm. I was also um, with like the finances and everything, I was actually able to use um, part of my student loans to pay for the trip. Just so you're aware as well. Oh, yes. so. Did you have a question? Yeah, so like we were talking about like fundraising as groups. Did you guys do any of that? Did you... um, we didn't do fundraising. fundraising but we did we... Uh, an Amazon wish list for yeah. our supplies, okay. um, but we didn't do any fundraising. I know the Carly Mom Scholarship is also a great opportunity, so if you can apply for that, definitely do that. Um, her family is amazing, and to have that generosity is, we shouldn't pass up on it, so. Also, with like the supplies and stuff, we ended up getting a lot of donations, so I ended up just buying like a suitcase from the thrift store. Yeah, and we, we bought just, two. Yeah, we bought two, and we just left them down there. Yeah. And if you guys are looking for places to donate, um, Target does it, and then we didn't do Walmart, but... We I tried Walmart, but they responded too late. Okay. They would yeah. give you donations, but they responded when we got back, and I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> also, we do have some stuff that I could give you guys to bring, because we had, like, a foot pedal, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just have stuff sitting in my garage still from <laughs> last year. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Does Billings have any questions? Do you guys have any questions? No? Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Um, if you ever have if you had any questions do ever come up, um, I'm certainly willing to sit down and talk about the experience more in detail. I think everybody is. Um, we all really loved it, so I wouldn't pass up on it. But even if peds isn't your thing, like it's still yeah, super peds, beneficial. 
stampedes has never really been my thing and is still not even after going on this trip but <laughs> i still love these kids and i still <laughs> i i still loved these kids and like i still learned so so yeah. much so worth it yeah perfect well if you have any questions you guys all have our emails dr lawson can you send them to the fargo's or billing students if yeah. they have questions you bet. perfect thank you guys for listening thank you thank you, thank you so much <laughs> Chelsea did a study abroad takeover. Yeah, he's um, a study abroad. So yeah, the Instagram account they had me take over. I'll take it over so you can let me have a study abroad.